How's it going everybody? Today I would like to talk about a cool intersect between math and crochet, which actually happens quite a bit. You may have seen one of these. It's a pretty standard hyperbolic crochet object. It's actually one single piece of fabric. There's nothing crazy going on here. It's crocheted in the round. Um, it's one giant spiral, but uh, every other stitch you increase, you add one more stitch. So you crochet one, then you crochet two, then crochet one, then crochet two. So the um, number of stitches in each round increases exponentially. You end up with this crazy warped structure that actually is one single piece. You know, you can connect uh, from this side to this side, one straight line. It's a pretty cool concept. It kind of looks like a coral reef or a loofah or whatever you would like it to be. Some people have made some pretty awesome structures with this. It inspired me to move on to a different type of crochet medium, that of the granny square and triangle. So these will look familiar to anyone who's learning crochet or who wants to make a blanket. They're pretty common objects, very easy to make. You stick a bunch of them together and you get a blanket. Pretty cool. Um, basically what you do is uh, you have a corner here, this corner, you make two stitches, uh, in this case double crochet, then a space, then two more stitches, and then uh, go around. Excuse me. Um, so every single side gets a four stitch increase and it ends up perfectly flat like that. Same with the uh, triangle, except you add three stitches, a space, then three stitches. So each side gets six stitches, but they both end up flat, perfect. So my idea was to take uh, this corner right here, which is a 60 degree corner because it's a triangle, and put it on a square, which has a 90 degree corner. And this was the result, this weird floppy thing. Also, excuse the tail, I'm too lazy to weave them in. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't want to lay flat. There's too much material. You try to push it down and something else pops up. Um, it's a pretty neat object. You can still tell that it's a square because it has four sides. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, four sides, but each angle is 60 degrees. And if I were to pinch two corners together, you see that it ends up looking like a triangle. I can actually stick it on top of the other triangle and it matches perfectly. Pretty cool. So it's a triangle at heart, it just doesn't look at it. like it. it has, you know, <laughs> you don't know what to call it. It's actually called a hyperbolic polygon. So I can uh, move on from there. I have a hexagon, six sides, with a 60 degree angle. So this looks pretty weird too. It's, you, it's hard to tell, but this does have six sides, but it is definitely floppy. It's harder to push down than the other one. Uh, it's pretty neat. Cool property of these is you can actually fold them to make them lie completely flat. So if you take the corners, connect them together, connect all the corners together, it lies completely flat in a cool shape. And it ends up looking like a triangle because it has a 60 degree turn. And if you put it right on top, it matches pretty well with the triangle. So these are two corners that are together. If I connect two opposing corners, I make a different shape that still looks like a triangle. Lay it on top, still matches pretty well. So it's pretty neat. You can do that with the square too, connect it. You get a different shape, looks like a triangle, again, connect two opposing, you get another shape, looks pretty neat. So these are examples of hyperbolic polygons, where this is a flat polygon, this is a flat polygon, these are hyperbolic polygons. So instead of increasing the number of stitches in each corner, what if you decrease them? That's what I did here, I have a pentagon that has one stitch, space, one stitch. And it ends up looking like a dome. 
you know? It's not wavy like this one, it's just smooth shaped. You still can't press it down, bubbles up like that, but it's definitely not flat. This is a spherical polygon because it kind of looks like part of a sphere. Um, you can also fold this one, it doesn't make as cool of a shape. But you notice when you fold them that the angle is, on this one, it's greater than 180 degrees. Here it's less than 180 degrees. And the square, if you fold it, it's exactly 180 degrees. So there's a concept in math called curvature. Every single object, every 3D object has curvature, or 2D or whatever. Um, in this case, this has negative curvature, which sounds weird. This has zero curvature. This has positive curvature. And there's really no uh, intuitive sense to what curvature really is, except seeing right here, you call this negative, this positive, and this zero. It has, uh, it has meaning in math, but it's not intuitively clear what it means. So I wanted to take this concept and I wanted to create a two-sided polygon, which makes no sense. There's no way you can connect two lines and make a polygon, but in crochet you can. Here it is. It's a same granny square concept, but it has four stitches, a space, four stitches. Each side increases by eight stitches, and it lays completely flat. I was kind of amazed when I knitted this one. I'm mean, sorry, crocheted. <laughs> um, so if this is a granny square and this is a granny triangle, what does this make? That granny football? I don't know. So I made a square with the same four stitch increase. It's right here. It's even more wavy than the last square. Very, very hard to push down. But it makes cool shapes when you connect to the corners. If I connect two corners together, I get this cool shape. But again, I can lay it on top and see how it meshes very, very close. Um, and if I connect two opposing corners, I get the Starfleet badge. And I lay it on top, still matches. Pretty neat. So. <clears throat> What I did, or what you can do with these squares, like I said, you can create a blanket. It's called tessellation, where you connect a bunch of squares together to create one flat object with no spaces. And these don't count as spaces. Uh, so you can do the same with the triangle, but what if you connected hyperbolic squares together? Well, that's kind of weird, you know, because it would definitely not lay flat. But when you connect the squares together, you connect four so that 90 degrees plus 90 plus 90 plus 90 equals 360, full rotation. Same with the triangle. This has 60 degrees, so you want to connect six together. So if I had a square with 60 degree internal angle, I would need to connect six together. And that's what I did here in this monstrosity. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a square in the center, and then there are six squares connecting it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, there are 16 total squares in here. And uh, there, you know, at each vertex there are six squares, one in the center. Uh, and it creates this cool shape that in math, you may be familiar if you've ever done multivariable calculus, it's called a hyperbolic parabola or a saddle and it kind of looks like a saddle you put on a horse you sit here uh, and the way you go so this wire is actually I did not forcefully bend it in this shape it kind of just happened naturally the natural curvature of the structure came out by adding this and the wires just make it so that it doesn't completely collapse uh, you can actually Mathematicians show hyperbolic tessellation using uh, this thing called a Poincaré disk, where you have your polygon here, 
and it connects to polygons and it looks really, really strange. But it's exactly analogous to what we have. So that's the center square and there are six rectangles connected. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can continue on out here. Uh, so this is a 2D representation. This is a 3D representation. It makes it makes more sense looking at it like this even this is even though this is floppy and weird looking so you can actually compare this to this they have a similar structure to them you know eventually it grows out so much that there's so much area that it starts folding in on itself you know if I were to extend this out it would just be a floppy mess even though it would be technically flat I could go from this space to this space without hitting anything it's just so wavy and jumbled that it's hard to show in real life just like this if I were to extend this out this would be just a big ball of goofa you know which is why this can be helpful to understand what the tessellation would be so uh, I had a lot of fun making these I have another bag full of examples um, but I would like to see your examples uh, go out and uh, vary the number of stitches, vary the number of sides, experiment, tessellate yourself. I have one challenge for you. If you were to take a triangle and make a 90 degree angle by adding two stitches, a space, two stitches, take eight of those and then tessellate them together, what would you get? That's your challenge. You tell me. But also love to see the math behind it. If you have any equations or 3D graphs, it would be cool to compare this to this to other things, you know, and we get a good, nice mixture of math in there. I would just love to see more about it. So thank you very much. Bye.